Gentlemen, men, may I have your attention? It's always a pleasure to address the Institute of Advanced Study. Oh, by the way, if there are any ladies who have managed to wangle their way in, you will please keep quiet or we will have to ask you to leave. <laughs> Gentlemen, in tonight's lecture, we will examine certain aspects of the human family. The human family has been with us a long, long time, throughout the ages. For no matter how clever the participants, it has always taken one male and one female to produce an offspring. Male, female, offspring equals family. How the social contract of marriage, that is the license of the preacher, is a comparatively recent historical development, which brings me to the heading of tonight's lecture, monogamy. One man legally married to one woman. Ladies, and to those of you over 40, girl, now, before I became Dean of Women, not too many decades ago, they didn't have courses in social psychology. They called it homemaking. Today, we call it domestic relations. You know who they are, bless them, their little scheming souls. So we will now devote our attention to that happiest, most precious state of bliss. The topic for today, marriage. Heading, monogamy. In the Marquesas Islands, many men are married to one woman. Can you imagine? <laughs> one woman with a lot of husbands, all at the same time. And apparently, she doesn't mind a bit. In Tibet, in India, in Tibet, in fact, in no less than 41 distinct societies, a wife is required to sleep with her husband's brothers. Apparently, nothing is too good for one's brother-in-law. There are also many societies where one husband has several wives. Muslims, under Karam Kla, are allowed only four wives. And if you think that's sad, the King of Ashanti in West Africa is kept down to a mere 3,333. <laughs> Gentlemen, these are the facts. Now this lecture is divided into two parts with only one intermission. And I likely also like to go on record as having a biased point of view. Even though I am a scientist, I am also what is known as a happily married man. I believe sincerely in the monogamous form, so help me God. <laughs> now ladies, there is nothing wrong in a woman's being single. Provided she doesn't fool around with other women's husbands. <laughs> Provided she isn't promiscuous with eligible bachelors. <laughs> Provided she's happy and wants to be alone. Provided she's dead. <laughs> but that's not to say marriage is the only answer. I am not here to praise marriage or to bury it. But let me give you an illustration from life. It was a warm spring weather and my husband and I were going along. We each have our classes and we eat, sleep, watch TV. We bicker a little and we're bored a little and we love each other a lot. We were expecting a couple of house guests, that's all. <laughs> I've lost four pounds. <laughs> 
I didn't say a thing. You'll get a little roly poly yourself. A man needs to be, um, it's called sturdy. What's for supper? Rack of lamb. 100 calories per serving. Baked potato. 100. Baked potato our way. 450. <laughs> what do you want for dessert? Jello. 25. <laughs> now what do you want for dessert? Banana cream pie. <laughs> you eat banana cream pie and somehow it shows up on my hips. <laughs> the whole thing comes to 575. According to this, we've been living on a sub-starvation diet for the past two years. You ought to weigh 75 pounds, and I died last week. The margin for us. Sweden, land of the Vikings. I see you're boning up on our guests. What time are they due? The telegram says arriving Tuesday. It doesn't say morning, noon, or night. Skull. Skull. That's Swedish for bottoms up. Signed, Katrine Spig. Is Katrine old enough to drink? Well, let's see. We met Niels at the University of London in 1948. Katrine was going to a St. Trinian's girls' school. Remember, captain of the hockey team. Didn't she wear pigtails? Pigtails with blazes on her teeth. And two-inch goggles. <laughs> but she's very bright. Oh, yes, I remember. She was very skinny with long, flat feet. Do you suppose he's changed a lot? Well, it's been 10 years. <laughs> 10 years. And we were married 15 before that. Paul, tell me the truth. Am I falling apart? Content, darling. Little baby girl. Now, don't overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you haven't changed, not to me. It's still summer, and the sun is shining. And one minute ago, I said, marry me. I hear the doorbell. Oh, I, I'll, I'll go get the luggage. And I'll uncork the welcome mat. <laughs> you see, girls, they can be very sweet. What does it matter if they make a little reference to one's figure? The main thing is they're still looking. <laughs> but really, nothing matters as long as that man is basically there. <laughs> By there, I mean yours. By yours, I mean lying around the house warm, well-fed, well-loved. When all is serene, by serene, I mean under control. <laughs> Make off, off a special vibration. It's a delicate, subtle sensation. But I don't have to tell you, if there's a one thing a woman knows, she knows when her man is tuned in. Oh, they can get cranky, sulky, but as long as that hum is nice and steady down underneath, all is well. By well, I mean, you got it. <laughs> well? He's coming. He stopped at the mirror. He spilled a little powder on her front. This is Delville. Hi. Come. Katrine, come in. Come in. Did you ever grow up? Sweden, land of the Vikings. Where is Nils? Nils didn't come. Didn't come? 
I thought he was already here. He said I was to meet him, and then we were to fly on to California. He's probably circling the field right now. Well, half the specs is better than none. I can't get over it. Captain of the junior hockey team? I have grown up a little. Up and out and around. <laughs> Wait till the Institute of Advanced Studies hears about this. Still, I don't suppose you'll be here long enough to start a riot. I'll do my best. <laughs> Is anything wrong with you, dear? Mm. He misses your pigtails. Pigtails? You used to wear braids. Oh, I still do when I get ready for bed. Just don't lower them out of the window. You'll get the whole faculty. <laughs> Cigarette? No, thanks. I really don't smoke. That's a good girl. We're very proud of your father, Katrine. We always knew he was a great man. But it's nice to have the rest of Christendom jump on the bandwagon. Yes, he is a great man. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Oh, why do you say that? I'm afraid he spoiled me for other men. Oh, it's not a matter of taking care of him. He has a houseman and a cook, and his mistress is really quite charming. <laughs> oh, yes, they are always charming. I mean, wouldn't it be a contradiction in terms to have a mistress who was a big fat bore? <laughs> is she new? Or last years, or however they call I thought you knew her. He's had her ever since mother. Her name is Hilda. She's about my age and perfect for him. So you see, he's well taken care of. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Oh dear, do you feel up to Tony Contrine's baggage up to the, her room? It would be a pleasure. Which of these do you need and which can Paul put in the closet? Uh, that's my outside, the largest piece. And this is my inside. I know. This is your inside clothes. Mr. Delville is French, isn't he? Please call him Paul. I think you're enrolling in something. Yes, he was French years ago. But he's not allowed to speak it in the house. <laughs> I'm from New England. <laughs> Uh, you have children? Yes, one of each. Will I meet them? Oh, they've long since grown and flown. We'll do the albums later. Forgive my pride, Katrine, but how is it you don't have a husband? Oh, I have a fiancé in Stockholm. We very nearly got married last fall. I have a picture of him. His name is Sven Bjorsen. He's quite hardy. <laughs> quite hardy. He makes Rocky Pop Marciano look like a little girl. <laughs> you keep this waiting around and you're, until you're ready to give the word. Katrine, let me give you some motherly advice. Give it. <laughs> Sven is nice, but he's, and he's steady and he's devoted to me, but he's not really exciting. Let's see that again. Tommy, you wanted me to remind you, it's a quarter past. Oh, thank you, darling. I've got to get after these notes. I just hope your father gets here before 8.30. I have to prepare my notes for the lecture I'm giving over at the Women's College. Social psychology is a very fast-moving item, and one page out of place <coughs> file up the young ladies for life. <laughs> Are you sure you're Katrine Speck? <laughs> you're giving me doubts. Please follow the hostess. You see, gentlemen, there is a kind of reflex response in the human male that 
works automatically at a given stimulus. It is common knowledge that even the steadiest of monogamous male notices, I'd say notices, a striking specimen of the opposite sex. Of course, it doesn't mean a thing. When you tickle the soles of the feet, the toes curl over. When you tap below the kneecap, the leg kicks up. It's merely a matter of built-in responses. It is what a man makes of it that counts. The monogamous male knows without question what is merely passing fair and what is truly important. And if he doesn't know, his wife will be glad to tell him. <laughs> Ladies, when a newcomer appears on the domestic scene, you can't help doing a little sizing up. How does she look? Is she clever? Is she a good sport? You pick up a thousand tiny clues that gradually add up to friend or foe. Before young Miss Fegg arrived, I was all set to feel motherly toward her. But the second time she walked in the door, I picked up two clues that automatically alert a woman of my age to possible trouble. One, her face. <laughs> and two, her figure. <laughs> now don't think I'm a nervous Nellie who panics at the first bat of an eyelash. But what's the percentage in letting a large, slow-eyed blonde lounge around your living room? <laughs> Mind you, I couldn't help but like Katrina. <coughs> but there was those little alarm bells. How does the right-minded homemaker proceed? <laughs> it's simple. She is friendly, hospitable, and completely relaxed. What it amounts to is a show of confidence. It says, I am confident of myself, my husband, my marriage, amen. Yes, sir. The confident wife is not afraid to give him some rope. <laughs> I adore your house. No, thank you. Well, no, no. What can we do? Hey, Jess. Oh, thank you. Uh, but please don't feel you have to look out for me. At least let me try. Cigarette? <coughs> I don't smoke. Oh, that's right. And you don't drink. Chewing gum? You sound like an American. I am an American. A naturalized citizen? Full-fledged taxpayer since 1934. Oh, the year I was born. Ah, uh, that's amusing. Can I fix you a drink? No, no, I'll do it. I drink and smoke and chew and everything. Except speak French. Content won't allow it. She used to, but her accent made me laugh. Parlons Francaise? J'aime la Francaise encore plus que l'anglaise. It's pretty, but if it's all the same in this house, I prefer American. Okay, if you insist. Besides, American is closer to Swedish. They each have their specialty, you know. German is good for science, Italian is grand for singing, and French is, well, let's face the facts. French is sexy. What is Swedish? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Give me a sample. Yo kama tals mio, verat si de darpen ag yo drom deum de. Sexy. <laughs> Tak, that's thank you. Thank you. Do you know what I said? Oh, something pretty. I said? I've come thousands of miles to see you because... Because? No, I can't tell you. But you came to see me for a special reason. I'm sorry I said that. Because... Because... I might as well. Because I had a dream about you. 
a dream about me, but you haven't laid eyes on me for ten years. But I dreamed about you. Several times, in fact. What did you dream? I mean, was it an installment? <laughs> All different things. Once was in Italy, once was in Spain, <clears throat> and once in France. Well, what do you mean, once? We were together. Chatting. Together. Come, come. What do you suppose ever prompted your subconscious to pick out me? It's very choosy. That's very sweet. You don't have to pat me on the head. This is not a schoolgirl crush. Because I don't happen to be a schoolgirl. I'm sorry if I sounded patronizing. You are a bit patronizing. But then, that's because I've been holding back the most important part. Don't tell me there's more. Oh, much, much more, Mr. Delville. But first, I think I ought to explain a little of why you are the lucky winner. I remember you vaguely from when I was a little girl. But to be perfectly candid, I, I never gave you a second thought until just this last year. <laughs> That's a relief. I was afraid that back when you were little, I might have inadvertently held your hand, or rubbed your leg, or kissed you on the top of the head, and, and start your motor. I'm quite sure if I let you rub my leg, you would start my motor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You were explaining why I won the sweepstake. I happened to see you in a newsreel when you presided over the Convention of Arts and Sciences at the United Nations. I asked my father about you. He told me you were a great genius, and that started me dreaming. And here I am. And here you are. Forgive me for being so clumsy, but I'm trying to tell you something, something important. Oh, I could lie to you so easily about this, Mr. Delville, but I feel that it's a point of honor to come right out in the open even if you pick me up and throw me out in the street. I'm not sure I could pick you up. But if, I, but if I did, I most certainly would not throw you out in the street. What would you do? I would probably stagger around the house, grinning from ear to ear until your weight crushed me to the floor, never to rise again. <laughs> but you seem to be trembling on the brink of telling me something momentous. What is it? Your carcomet to Santa's meal, for your meal, I did scarly father till me barn. Poor Swedish, have we already been through that? Oh no, Mr. Delville. What I just said was the whole truth, all of it. It sounded sincere. I said, I've come thousands of miles to see you because... And then I say, because, and then you say... Because I want you to be the father of my baby. <laughs> <laughs> my heart is beating. And mine has stopped. <laughs> I hope you're not angry. Angry? Why should I be angry? I hoped you would understand. It's so important. Mm. Would you do something for me? Would you call my wife? Why? I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> because of what I just said. Do you mind if we go back? You said something in Swedish, several paragraphs at various times this evening. Will you go back and repeat it again? Slowly. In plain American, I want you to be the father of my baby. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Your baby? My baby. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to. That's up to you. <laughs> oh. To me? It wasn't easy to come right out and say a thing like that. I didn't want to put it so bluntly, but it's a point of honor to be completely open about it. I appreciate your forthright approach. 
It so happens that I'm in my early 20s, and you as an anthropologist with your knowledge of anatomical structure, you know that my physique is primed in readiness. I would know that if I were a street cleaner. <laughs> You see, I may have waited past the moment of perfection, but my mind has always forced me to keep control. No, not yet. Not him. No, not that one. Wait, wait until you find the perfect father. And then I saw you in the newsreel, standing there like a king, presiding over all the arts and sciences of all the nations of the world. I feel honor bound to tell you as only temporary chairman. <laughs> what woman on earth has a better right to bear the perfect child? I am the daughter of a genius, of the Nobel Prize commander of the Legion of Honor. And my mother was a great beauty, sought after by painters and sculptors, I am told I was conceived on Midsummer's Night out of a very great love. And look at me, Mr. Delville. Don't you see? The power of the universe has come to have me offer myself to you. It's the nicest offer I've had in weeks. I don't blame you for trying to take it lightly. Oh, I assure you it's made a profound impression. But you know, inheritance sometimes plays tricks. And I'm willing to take that chance. And sometimes it takes a while. If at first you don't succeed. <laughs> Not yet. But, Miss Fanny, Katrine, you really don't know me at all. You taught me how powerful I actually am in your writings. You stress it again and again. Women are the mainstream of nature's creative evolution. Those are your words. The female body has sounder construction than men. Women live many years longer than men. And most important of all, women have twice as many X chromosomes. It's a wonder you even speak to us. Without your divine spark, we are nothing. Divine spark. Girl, who knows all of this can be dangerous. Dangerous or desirable. It's the same thing. I won't ask you to say yes or no right now. <laughs> That's good. Just let the idea spread through you for a while. Think about it, Monsieur Delville. There you stand in the golden years of your most mature strength, and I have come thousands of miles to have you make love to me. Gentlemen, <laughs> a similar surprise happened to me in my university days in Paris when a chemistry experiment blew up in my face. Now the question presents itself, what then does the balanced, responsible, monogamous male actually do when he is subjected to unusual pleasure and pressure? <laughs> the answer is plain. Contrary to women's beliefs, the monogamous male makes a sincere effort to avoid foreign entanglements. He rises above it. And there you have your answer, men. Rise above it. <laughs> Very well, I won't say yes or no, but if you don't mind, I think it would be wise for us to change the subject. <laughs> Better for both of us, calmer, cooler. And besides, I think my wife is coming. Well, off to work. Girls, you can tell in two seconds. It's a slight shift in room temperature. <laughs> a faint formality about them that looks phony. At first, you think it's your insanely suspicious nature. But it isn't. It's the hum. <laughs> it's 
sounds different, a little strained and not quite so steady. And the nice girl visitor is comfy. Not comfortable like your maiden aunt, but comfy. <laughs> it's the merest shadow, one shoe half off, or the top button undone. Yet, you can be sure, but you know damn well somebody said something to somebody. <laughs> now, what do you do? Go through with your risky reeling out of rope? Or do you give it a quick yank and trip them up? So hard it flips your house guest clear back to swing. <laughs> but you don't do it. No, 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 no. You are a mature woman. I'm sorry, girls. There is no alternative. If you wish your marriage to endure, as long as there is any hum, even the feeblest peep, you go right along as though nothing is wrong. <laughs> well, I hope you two are having a nice visit. Mr. Delville is even more charming than I remembered. And I'll bet you're even more charming than he remembers. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, tell her it's all right to call you by your first name. I don't feel as if I know any Mr. Delville. It's the European showing. I was afraid it might seem too familiar. Mr. Delville, does Miss Spake have your permission to get familiar? <laughs> I have decided to adopt her. <laughs> then it's settled. From now on, we'll all call you Big Daddy. <laughs> Do you excuse me? I'd like to unpack some things. I brought you a present. You shouldn't have. Where is it? <laughs> Give it to me when I get back. I'll hand the girls the abridged version and be back by 1030. The low steps? Third door, on the right. Don't go left or you'll wind up in the broom closet. Um, she, uh, she asked me if I would like to become the father of her baby. The father of her baby? That's what she said. And what did you say? I said, that's very sweet of you. <laughs> what are you going to name it? I, <laughs> I didn't commit myself. She sat there, and you sat there, and she said, would you, I mean, dash it, would you care to hang it when I'm driving out? No, she came right out with it. I see. Subtle approach. And something like that. Well, loads of luck. I think you can manage while I'm gone? I'll lock myself in my room. Just be sure she's on the outside. I must say, it's given me a lift. She picked me out because her father says I have a big brain. And big brown eyes. And a glorious physique. I would think you would lose your mind being married to a man all these years. Well, don't lose your mind at being left alone with this Valkyrie. Aren't they the ones that carry heroes off to Valhalla? You be careful. She's big enough to carry you off to the third door on the right. I'll be careful. Hurry back. You mean hurry back slow? I mean hurry back that fast. <laughs> Girls, when a husband kisses his wife, he tells her his inmost secrets. I'm happy to say that the kiss my husband gave me was just right. That familiar loving peck that says nothing has changed. I am here, you can trust me, always. 
Oh, I can hear you hard-hearted girls saying, trust one of these overgrown delinquents? Never. I know I sound like an idealist, but hear me out. My husband told me what had transpired, right out, straight from the shoulder. And we kidded about it. When you can kid about it, it's not going to kill you. And what, why shouldn't his hum have wavered for a moment? After all, she is a hum dinger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but now the hum was back, loud and clear and hi-fi. Oh. So I went to deliver my lecture with a peaceful heart. <laughs> well, that's a pretty dress, a little smock, after all. It's a lounging pajama. I bought it at a dress shop in New York City. You fill it out nicely. <laughs> this is your present. Well, let's wait for Content to open it. She likes to open presents. All right, but I would, I want you to know that even though it's hers to enjoy, it was really meant for you. You know, Content likes you very much. And I like her. I mean it. She's one of the few women that I've met who has a good mind and good looks. I wish she could hear this. I thought I detected a tendency to leave her out of the fun. Fun? What we have in mind is much more important than just fun. Do we have in mind? You said you'd think about it. Well, at least we're back to it. <coughs> I was afraid you might have forgotten. You still don't believe I'm serious, do you? I still don't believe I even heard you. <laughs> then I'll repeat it. I want you to help me have a baby. Ha <laughs> ha! Out of your mind. <laughs> but it intrigues you. I haven't found anything as intriguing since Scrabble. <laughs> have you given it some thought? Not on purpose. It's probably working its way down into your subconscious. I think it's only fair to tell you that it worked its way into a conversation with my wife. You mean you consulted her? Oh, we thrashed out the pros and cons. Good, good, I'm glad. You don't care if she knows about your plans? Oh, it's actually much better. I want it all clear and above board. What did she say? She wished me luck. <laughs> Naturally, she can't take it seriously either, but I don't mind. I'm glad she's been alerted. Otherwise, it might come as a shock. You're really something, you know. Yes, I know. I thought you might. Well, now time to change the subject. We'll refer back to it from time to time whenever I feel I need a lift. Yes, it's quite wrong to dwell on it. We must chat about other things and let our feelings concentrate on the main point. Oh, if it's all the same to you, I'm going to turn off the whole world. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. You can't turn your emotions on and off. Nerve impulses are purely electrical, and when a heavily charged field like me sets up a disturbance, your electrical system responds. Don't you feel that takes some of the romance out of it? On the contrary, it opens up a bigger, more mysterious than ever. To the scientific mind, you are a beautiful mystery called modern man sitting quietly in a web of radiant forces. It's a natural phenomenon, and you like the way it feels. At least I like the way it looks. It's basic, Mr. Delville. A man and a woman alone together are subject to rigid and unalterable laws. Uh -oh. Just look at me. <laughs> uh oh, perhaps I had better go up to my room. Oh, don't worry. We won't let it get beyond the visual stage tonight. Uh -huh. It's visual stage. I promise not to be provocative. The way you look means very little to me, except for the fact that you are clean and pleasant 
and reasonably well shaped. But what you are, what you reveal by what you think and say, the way you look when you are engrossed in something, it is an innocent and beautiful concentration. It's overwhelming. I see. When I concentrate, I am irresistible. It undoes me. <laughs> and I'm grateful that you've decided to keep all this on the level of respectable staring. Ah, but don't underestimate the power of the visual impact. All right. But don't do anything drastic to step up the voltage. I mean, don't get too visual while taking off your clothes. As a matter of fact, I had planned something along those lines. Katrine, Miss Fake, you are not to be trusted. Oh, I intend to be very careful, Mr. Delville. I know you are a very sensitive man. You have broken your promise, and you are provoking me with all of the powers at your command. However, I pride myself on being the rock of Gibraltar. Even if you are not to be trusted, I am. Excuse me, I am going to place a record and we will listen to an uninterrupted program of light classical music. Which do you prefer? Gypsy airs, gems from Fremont, or music for swinging lovers? Need you ask. Now sit, cover up, and pay attention. Gentlemen, there comes a time when it is wise to step back and review the situation. There is no question but that a truly dedicated female, given the proper ammunition, can begin to dent the male's protective armor. There is no point in pretending that this is not powerful stuff. But the apparently harmless sparks that sometimes lead between male and female can set off a chain reaction and the resultant explosion has been known to demolish many a marriage. Ah, gentlemen, a moment's mature reflection about one's wife does wonders of dispelling the uncalled for moonbeams. Where is she now? What is she doing? It is nice to be sure of someone. Ladies, as everyone knows, it is somehow personal and reassuring to save a dollar now and then out of the budget for some secret little nest egg. And it is also reassuring in budgeting one's life to save out a special hour or two for purely personal reasons. I completed my lecture to the senior girls in record time in order to take a moment out for a heart-to-heart -heart chat with a very close personal friend. Professor Ross Barnett is head of the Department of Indo-European Languages at the university. Ross and I have known each other for, oh, about 20 years and we have managed to meet quite regularly in various out-of-the-way corners, like this little nook in Howard Johnson's. <laughs> Nobody knows or cares, and we don't worry about being seen together, because no one ever sees anyone in a Howard Johnson's. <laughs> now, some of you cynical girls might find this hard to believe, but there is nothing absolutely nothing between us. Oh yes, there is a personal bond, an unbreakable bond of respect and understanding. Ross is happily married to a dream of a wife, and they have two boys in college. But all we do is talk and laugh, or both. It's possible, girls, believe me, it's possible for a man and a woman to be lo talking, laughing, friends. Hi. I ordered you a double. Oh, it's so nice to have someone who understands the real me. 
Your eyes are different this evening. What's wrong with them? The blue one's happy and the brown one's sad. <laughs> the blue one is glad to see you, but the other one can't quite make it. Paul. That obvious. You want me to hire some gangsters to beat him up? It's not just him. I'd like to have someone deported. <laughs> deported? Name? Spake. Katrine. Hair? Blonde. Oh, boy. Eyes? Great big baby blue. Figure? Great big baby grand. <laughs> Age? Young. 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 I'd better handle this personally. She's got some secret words that turn men into 16-year-old boys. Secret words? Yeah. Let's have a baby. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty immature. And she'd be glad to have it by the nearest man old enough to be her daddy. How does she feel about language professors? <laughs> Perfect. You could work it out in Swedish. <laughs> Don't tell me Paul's gone full Scandinavian. It's real all right. How far along is it? It's still in that first shy bud where they don't know it, but I do. <laughs> How long has he known her? Ten years. Ah, one of those fly-by-night things. No, they just met this evening. Crammed in ten years since dusk? She was a little girl ten years ago. Now she's a big girl, a great big girly girl. <laughs> oh, come on. She doesn't have a thing that you didn't originate in patent. Mm. Ross, uh -huh. remember a few years back when you got mixed up with that fat brunette, that <laughs> little history major who won the May Queen contest by seducing all the judges? There was only one judge, and I was completely above reproach. Get your facts straight. It was after the May Queen contest, and he seduced her because he was neurotic about not being appointed head of the languages department. He was sick and sorry, and it all ended in a big mess. But at least his wife never found out, even if he was foolish enough to confide in his closest female friend in the hope that she would let him lean his head on her bosom and maybe seduce her? Ross, do you remember that fact, Brunette? Vaguely. Do you remember how it got started? Seriously, I forget how these star-crossed romances get going. Well, we met. Come on. Pretend that I'm preparing my thesis on great lovers of our time, and you're going to get your own footnote. In that case, it got going, uh, well, the standard methods. We, well, we met in the moonlight under the spell of the nightingale, and I recited romantic poets, Victorian and later. Please. How does anything get started? We kissed and skipped off to bed and hated each other happily ever after. <laughs> now look, I won't have Paul's tomfoolery cast a cloud over these few fleeting moments we managed to snatch from life's desperate gamble. I waited 20 years for him to come a cropper so you can see what a tragic farce you've made of your lives together. I've known, even if you haven't, that he is rotten to the core. <laughs> and you are a beautiful, wise, and wonderful woman. Now, if you're ready to wash your hands of him, I'll ditch my family, and we'll elope from Bermuda on the midnight flight. How many times have you threatened to elope with me to Bermuda? <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Every year for 20 years, you'd think I would be ready, wouldn't you? 
<laughs> of course, if you're satisfied to go on with that weakling you're married to... Well, we've come a long way together, Coach. It's only fair to give him one more shot at the title. And if he doesn't shape up, I'll toss in the towel and we're off to Bermuda at midnight. That's the old fight. Get in there and give them hell. You bet I will. The old one, two, three, four, as many as it takes. <laughs> oh, Ross, you always give me just what I need. A drink, a pep talk, and a strong shoulder to lean on. I could just kiss you. My God, it's 10 o'clock time for the main bout. Good old Ross. Check, please. Mr. Delville, the music is lovely, but would you be angry if I do something personal? How personal? Something that will make me feel good. How will it make me feel? Well, it, it may disappoint you. All right, only if you promise to disappoint me. I want you to see something before your wife gets back. Please, just look at it. Oh yes, that. I made this for you. It, it's beautiful. A statuette of a nude woman. It's really stunning. <laughs> you made it. It's incredible. The sweep along here, that lift, it's breathtaking. I'm so glad you like this it. This exquisite curve down and around. The train. You made it. It's you. But how could you? You can't look over your shoulder and model your own backside. It sounds narcissistic, but I made it for you. I knew I couldn't give myself to you, at least not the minute I met you. Mm -hmm. So I found a way. Here I am, Mr. Delville, all yours. I don't know what to say. Thank you. I feel peculiar. I am holding you in my hand with, that, with no clothes on, and it's still completely respectable. It's amazing. Does it really please you? Your father once told me, when you say beauty, look for a long time. And it's only the beginning. Beginning? Yes, we are progressing step by step, breaking down the boundaries in a sequence of little transgressions. Is this handkerchief? Is this supposed to break down my boundary? It's a weakening agent. <laughs> Do you notice the perfume? Mm. <laughs> it's French. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a little method to this madness. There's nothing you can do. That perfume is now deep in your subconscious. Yes, I can feel it distinctly. It's the perfume I use all the time. So even when the lights are out, some of me will be with you. Oh, no, no, let's leave the lights off. <laughs> Okay, but you know the most powerful is when we actually touch. Like shaking hands. Yeah, okay. that would do for a start. Would you like to shake hands? But what if nothing happened? Oh, well, it would begin to happen. But we shook hands when you arrived. And didn't something begin to happen? You understand, this is strictly in the interests of science. <laughs> My pleasure, Mr. Delville. I feel as though I'm jumping off a cliff. <laughs> but what's a handshake among friends? Of course, welcome to our planet. Do you feel it? Your hands are cold. Perhaps I'm the one that's nervous. Americans say, cold hands, warm heart. Yes, my heart is very warm. We can't stand here shaking hands all night. <laughs> but now that we have touched, I don't see why we shouldn't dance a bit, huh? In the interest of science. Which do you prefer, a waltz or the cha-cha-cha? We have both. Let's start off slow with a waltz. 
This takes me back to Vienna. My friends, for a man of an inquiring mind, there is an undeniable fashion, fascination to be found in experiments. But controlled curiosity must not be confused with foolhardy fiddling. The mature man knows his limits. He drinks in moderation, he dines in moderation, and there's no harm in the sedate waltz, provided it is done with dignity. However, the ethical question arises for the monogamous male, not one to dance with an exquisite young girl while one's wife is out working. Surely, if it is an offense, it is not a serious one. After all, what man among you has not exceeded the speed limit in a deserted stretch of highway? And who has never parked a few feet too close to a fire club? Well, it so happens that some men like dancing with an exquisite creature now and then, and they damn well intend to do it. I must say, we are certainly progressing. We have engaged no less than four of the five senses. You have seen me. You have heard my voice. You know my perfume. And you are touching me. The only thing left is to eat it. Mr. Delville. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if we were to get carried away? I'm far away. Say, a restrained, dignified kiss. I would faint. So would I. And content would find, would come home and find bodies all over the floor. My heart is beating like mad again. Catherine, according to my calculations, it is time to call a halt. If we were to kiss, it might stop beating. That's not supposed to be good for you. <laughs> Mr. Delville. Katrine. Softly on the cheek. <laughs> all right, all right, men. Even the most carefully regulated experiments can get out of control. I make no bones about it. There is an X factor. Don't ask me what it is. It is in there somewhere. At times like these, there is another built-in reflex that occurs to the male, a maddening refrain that keeps running through what is left of the brain. I quote, what the hell? I mean, what the hell? <laughs> Perfect. Did I just kiss you? Don't you remember? My mind is a complete blank. <laughs> I'll keep reminding you. The time is now 10.30, which does remind me I am a happily married man, and I never saw you before in my life. I have no right to seize you against your will. Katrine, please forget that we ever met. Ah, you hear that car in the driveway? The next voice you hear will be my wife. Here I come, ready or not. Hello, hello, hello. No sign of Niels? Not yet. <laughs> Mrs. Delville, would you mind terribly if I went up to my room? I'm afraid I'm exhausted. Those streamlined trains are bumpy. Oh, it's not the train so much, it's the dancing. Answer. <laughs> Mr. Delville has a wonderful cha-cha-cha. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Ladies, it is high time we got down to brass tacks. The rules of marriage give a wife one powerful advantage. The bedroom. In a happy marriage, the bedroom is a happy place. Even in a miserable marriage, it's not so bad. <laughs> a lot of problems have been 
solved in the boudoir, and I recommend it highly for reminding husbands why they got married in the first place. <laughs> if I may reveal a few state secrets, my husband and I sleep in separate beds. It happens to be my idea, because I cannot get a good night's sleep with all those knees and elbows poking around. <laughs> I think it's all a matter of personal preference. I must say, if there isn't enough enthusiasm for someone to travel a few feet between beds, to hell with it. <laughs> On occasion, however, you might find that the bed next to yours is empty. But if you're lucky, you'll find the missing link out in the kitchen raiding the fridge. <laughs> You. Drumstick. I knew we had a chicken thief. I tried to lie quiet. The silence woke me up. Don't tell me she makes you lose sleep. Who? Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've been wanting to talk to you about her. Earlier tonight, while you were at her lecture, well, she well. She threw herself at me. Did you catch her? <laughs> I could be in Bermuda by now. <laughs> you know me. You mean personally? Seriously, who am I? Well, let's see. You live on University Drive with that slim, attractive dean of women. But what's my name? I'd have to look that up on your chart. You were so pale when they carried you in, you kept calling, content, content. Who is she? Someone beautiful. You seem well enough to me. I have a problem. We're here to help you. I feel perfectly normal, except for a foolish notion that seems to be lodged down in the lower left corner of my brain. I feel like an idiot. I mean, I am ashamed. Paul, darling, honey, I understand. It's the most normal thing in the world. And believe me, as long as you love me and I love you, it does not matter a ticker's damn. But it's so silly. I mean, lying awake. Damn it, I'm sleepy. Oh, come over here. You need a back rub. You've been so gosh darn charming, it's got you all tensed up. I must be insecure, I mean, n nervous about something else. What? I think it's my hair. It gets grayer by the minute, grayer and fewer. But you're supposed to get gray and few. It's the mark of wisdom. And it makes you twice as handsome. It is pretty depressing, isn't it? <laughs> it? Makes me think of winter. Let it snow. I'll keep you warm and cozy. Ah, oh, sweet darling chicken thief. I love you black and gray and few and lots and green and blue and purple. It's funny. That trouble in my head seems to be going away. Go away. Would you like me to do that for you? I'll make her go away. As smaller and smaller and smaller. Doctor, my vision is clearing. Good. How many? All mine. Who loves you more than anyone in the world? All mine. What is the foundation of a happy marriage? <laughs> Correct. <coughs> Don't I know you? Please. Aren't you from Boston? Please, I'm waiting for a streetcar. I'd like to help you with your bundles. Oh, what are you doing? How much do you weigh? You had me worried with that trick grip. I bet I could lift you. It's the grip against the 
rules to lift the din of women. <laughs> oh, you'll strain something. Nonsense. I mean something of mine. Light as a feather. Now you'll be too tired. In all the years we've been married, have I ever been too tired? Yes. Huh. Never mind. <laughs> I'll carry you. <laughs> you know, if we lean on each other, we might just make it to my bed. Your bed? What a wonderful idea. <laughs> Everyone seated? No trouble with the women? <laughs> Good. Then the women keep to themselves and we'll keep to ourselves. Right. Now men, don't be alarmed by this pile of books. I believe no serious lecture on monogamy is complete without the proper documentation. Dr. Alfred Kinsey, quote, oh. Monogamy is a cultural, perhaps for some impossible, ideal, not the actual pattern of behavior, even in our own society, unquote. Professor Lita S. Hollingsworth, professor of anthropology, quote, sexual impulse is in both sexes arousable by a variety of stimuli regardless of ceremonial and legal restrictions, unquote. Oh, sexes? <laughs> Men, these are the experts. Ladies. begin part two of tonight's lecture by examining the male animal. <laughs> Have you ever tried to figure out why you shoot up your whole life trying to make him happy? <laughs> Is it because they are so strong, handsome, intelligent, or is it because they look like they need help? <laughs> the average male lives to 71 years old. The average female lives to be 84. In the world population, the female outnumbers the male two to one. This, then, is the powerhouse who actually believes he could satisfy a whole harem of females. <laughs> the fact is, the average man is not competent to satisfy one woman. <laughs> Why do women get hysterical over these poor, flimsy things? The answer is so obvious, it's painful. Ladies, these happen to be all there is. <laughs> These are it. So until something better comes off the drawboard, these are the strongest, handsomest, most intelligent brutes on the block. And I, for one, worship the ground they barely stand on. <laughs> We now go now to the following afternoon. Same place, same group. <laughs> Paul, what are you doing? I appreciate lofty thoughts, but you've been staring out of that window like a stone. Have you glanced at the terrace recently? Don't tell me Miss Health and Strength is taking a sun bath. She is taking a sun bath for the half. Naked as a chance. 
start creating own natural Must be an old Swedish custom. Yes. How long has she been out there? About an hour. I see you rushed to tell me. <laughs> I thought it would go away if it's on a car. Your eyes get bloodshot when you don't blink. <laughs> I see nothing wrong in observing the classic symmetry of the human form. As a matter of fact, she is one of the few people I've ever seen who has perfect feet. And perfect toes. Why don't you run out of there and nibble on them? <laughs> don't put on that towel, Katrine. Your fans want one more chorus. <laughs> Wait. Pick up seats or she won't know we've been playing peekaboo. <clears throat> oh, what glorious sunshine. Good afternoon, Katrine. Would you call would you care to go take a sun bath? It's getting chilly. Oh, have you been out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wish I had known. I would have joined too. And you would have too. Pull up a hassock. I'd love to. Katrine, as you know, I am Dean of Women. On occasion, I have to call one of the girls into my office for disciplinary reasons. Did someone do something that to annoy you? Someone tried to rattle my husband. I see. It might interest you to know that whoever it was may have shaken him a bit, but he refused to rattle. That's the most sure. But Katrine, I try to be a good hostess. I offer you liquor, cigarettes, and the run of the house, but I did not offer you the head of the house. <laughs> Mrs. Delville, I'm afraid there's some misunderstanding. Do you think I want your husband? Yes, I do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I don't want your husband. Oh? He is divine, and I adore him. But he's old enough to be my father. Now wait. I believe we have a wire crossed somewhere. <laughs> if you don't want him, what are you doing with all that? A what? Whatever it is, you keep shooting off like a bundle of rockets. <laughs> are you sure you don't have even a teeny design on the old gentleman? Let me put it this way. I don't want him for keeps. Just for the season? <laughs> Katrine, he told me, I hardly know how to put it, I mean, hell's bells. I beg pardon? Is something the matter? A language barrier, of course. You must have said you hope to have babies someday by someone as charming as Mr. Delville. No, I said I want to have a baby by Mr. Delville. Yes, well, that's what the man said she said, and by <laughs> golly, that's what she said she said. <laughs> you know you are very safe. I feel fine. And you look fine. Pupils no normal, nothing twitching. I have it. You grew up too fast. You shot up and left your brain behind. <laughs> That's it. It's not your fault. Because you are really only 12 years old and you have a tiny brain. My IQ happens to be 164. That's nothing. Mine happens to be 135. <laughs> Trina, you must help me find an explanation for your behavior. It's quite simple. Mr. Delville is a great genius, and I intend to become the mother of a perfect child. The fact that Mr. Delville has been happily married all these years is part of his genius. I heartily approve of marriage. I am sure we are all heartily glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm 
sure. However, in Sweden, we have a more liberal attitude. About busting up homes? <laughs> no, about bringing up children. The state awards an allowance to unwed mothers, and we're sensible about illegitimate offspring. Who knows? Perhaps I'll marry when I get back to give the baby a father image. Why don't you marry first and give the father a baby image? <laughs> I told you, I'm not sure I want a husband. You see, Katrin, in this country, we are products of the Puritan Rebellion, and we are very straight-laced about marriage. And while we don't exactly limit it to one to a customer, <laughs> we do try to keep it down to one at a time. <laughs> do I make myself clear? I do get the meaning of that. Good. And I want you to understand that I am not angry. I realize that in far off Sweden, they have a different set of ground rules. But in this neck of the woods, one does not hunt or trap without the proper license. <laughs> See? Paul Delville. Off limits. Finished. <laughs> Am I to understand that you forbid me to borrow your husband? Borrow, beg, or steal. <laughs> I appreciate your interest in the matter, but is it really up to you? Up to me? I don't mind discussing it with you if it makes you feel better, but first, let me say that I, in turn, am not angry. However, I do think we ought to face the facts. Mr. Delville is the heart of the matter. He is mature. He is a free citizen of the United States, and he is fully capable of making his own decisions. I outlined my plan to him, and I must say he has reacted most favorably thus far. <laughs> Until I hear from him that he is off limits, I intend to proceed as scheduled. This is Delville, for your own sake, I ask you to think carefully. I am younger, prettier, slimmer, stronger, bigger, and more intelligent than you. Don't fight it. I take it you had words with our young friend? Yes, indeed. I really let her have it. Now that she's got it, I hope she gives it back when she's through with it. <laughs> I don't follow you. I put my foot down and she stepped on it. <laughs> she's young, pretty, big, strong, and out of her head. And I'm not sure I can manage two balls out of three. She needs a good spanking. Just keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> And I take it we're surrounded, and there's nothing to do but have me over. Paul, oh, my darling, believe me, if there was anything I could do to save you from this horrible fate. <laughs> of course, there's one thing that might save us. What? The cavalry may arrive on time. The cavalry? Deals, of course. Obviously, her father was the solution. The thought of her daddy taking her by the hand and leading her off to a padded cell took a great weight off my mind. And I even took the station wagon, went to the supermarket to buy some cartons of cigarettes, leaving the sacred treasure unguarded. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Delville, uh, I'll come in, my dear. Mr. Delville, may I ask you a question? Please do. Why did you tell a lie? I beg your pardon. A small lie. I believe it is called a white one. A fib. Fib. What an insane language. You said you didn't know I was out on the terrace taking a sun bath. I may have said something like that. I'm sure you thought my eyes were fastened shut, but I saw you standing by the window. How do you know I saw you? 
What if I didn't happen to notice you lying there, naked as a jay? I'm glad you made this step. Glad? It shows you a weakening. Weakening? All lie is always the first sign of collapse. But I can almost call for help. Do you want to call for help? Yes. She won't hear you. Why not? She went out to the supermarket. Katrine, you are a nice girl. I would not want to have to spank you. Mm, physical violence, my, this is getting exciting. <laughs> yes, isn't it? We seem to be skipping over the preliminary steps. Yes, I must say the energy level is much stronger. Last night it led to a kiss, and what do you suppose it would lead to if I were quietly, if I would quietly step out of my clothes? I would quietly step out of the room. Your voice is trembling. You ought to see my knees. <laughs> Let me ask you what it would lead to if my wife and your father were to walk in here and catch us shaking like this. Your wife took the car and we could hear it coming up the drive. But one of your father is wearing sneakers. Oh, you don't have to worry about him. Of course not. He'll pour himself a drink and glance at the Reader's Digest until we're ready to say hello. He may not arrive at all. Why do you say that? Intuition. My intuition tells me that now you're making a fib. Mine happens to be backed up by a letter. A letter? Yes. You can't read it. It's in Swedish. <laughs> Would you care to render it freely? Dear Kiki, that's what he calls me. The feeling? Unable to join you due to important new developments and research problem, please convey my sincerest regrets to Monsieur and Madame Delville and tell them I will write as soon as I complete the project. Katrine, how long have you known about this? Your father not coming to meet you here? Only, only a few weeks. <laughs> Why all the sleight of hand? Unless someone tells your wife that Nils is not coming, I'm in a position to linger on as your house guest day after day after day. <coughs> and what makes you think someone won't tell her? Someone will when he gets good and ready. He can even give her this so that she can read about it. You actually believe you're irresistible, don't you? Do you actually believe that I'm not? Katrina, I can resist anything. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> I can't resist you. You've proven your point. Now I must ask you to get out. Get out? Leave my house. I want you. So you'll have to go. It's my fault. I've let this whole thing get out of hand. Mr. Delville. Not another word. I love my wife and I do not intend to deceive her. If you stay here another minute, I might... Paul! Oh. There's no alternative. You must pack up your baggage and go. Off limits? Off limits. Well, men, there you have it. A tower of strength. The perfect husband. Oh, I tell you, it makes a man proud to order a gorgeous young girl to put on her clothes, pack up her bags, and get out. It also makes the man feel about 150 years old. <laughs> My friends, a nagging question presents itself. Does a man resist temptation because he is strong of will, or simply because he is losing his grip? This is no idle question because most men know for a fact that if they were still in the hot plug of youth, they would no more, more offer a gorgeous creature out than fly to the moon. This is one of the great dilemmas of the monogamous male. Does he obey the rules because he is of noble character 
or getting feeble. I advise you to ignore this part of the lecture because the question honestly put can drive a man to drink. All peace and quiet? No skirmishes with the enemy? A complete rout. Yours or hers? Hers. I was sitting, reading quietly, when she came slithering in and rubbed me the wrong way. That's an ill-chosen phrase. <laughs> and what? I sent her packing. Okay. I ordered her out. Out where? In the street. University Drive? I will not have this menacing creature breathing down my neck. You really do take her seriously. I take her as seriously as I would any long-haired, half-naked gnat buzzing around my ears. <coughs> it drives me insane, and I am delighted to get rid of it. Well, I think it shows a sh shocking lack of character. <laughs> you actually let this big straw mop sweep you off your feet? You're incapable of keeping her at arm's length even with her daddy do any minute. About her daddy. No, it's not exactly polite to give your friend's daughter the old heave-ho, no matter how much she buzzes. Are you suggesting that I apologize? I'm suggesting you get a grip on yourself. You want me to make friends with her? I want you to face the fact that you're a little past the point where you ought to let a bosomy baby doll give you the shimmies. <laughs> if you weren't so busily ugly every waggle, you'd see her for the overgrown hockey player she is. <laughs> treat her the way you treat people of your own vintage. She'll soon run out of the front door weeping of boredom. You find me, you find me boring? I find you a constant pleasure. But I like a quiet talk, and a quiet walk, and TV, and trips, and books, and teaching. Take her to listen to one of your learned colleagues' lectures, and soon she'll be clawing at the windows for Daddy to come and rescue her. About her Daddy. If it were unendurable torment for a matter of days, I'd say no. But a couple of hours is not too much to ask. In a way, it all boils down to a matter of time. I'll tell her to come in here. Gentlemen, for one moment now, may we consider the phenomenon of the lie? What is a lie? Conk and Wagnall seem to agree that it is an utterance that is false and intended to deceive. But one may ask, an all lies by nature wrong? And think about the virtue we call discretion, the only virtue designed to cover a fault. But if there were nothing questionable to be discreet about, there would be no use for discretion. Is it really a lie simply to keep one's mouth shut? <laughs> to, to speak or not to speak, that is often the question. <laughs> Mrs. Delville says you wish to speak to me before I leave. My wife and I have discussed your idée fixe, and we have decided that you can't help it if you're Swedish and I am overwhelmingly attractive. <laughs> Therefore, I wish to apologize for my gauche behavior and to ask you to please remain on the premises. You want me to stay? Yes. And to show my good faith, I would like to have you accompany me to a fascinating lecture which one of my learned colleagues is delivering this evening at the Institute of Advanced Studies. It is called Inversion and Reciprocal Translocation of Chromosomes. Chromosomes? It's all about the love life of a fruit fly. It's going to be charged with excitement. And I insist that you be my guest. It sounds thrilling, but Mr. Delville, what about my father? Um, yes, about your father. 
content to die if you it might hurt his feelings to find his daughter sitting out on the curb crying. I quite understand. Aha, c'est bon. You will be in good hands, so don't worry about a thing. And I'll keep a sharp out lookout for Niels, and the minute he arrives, I'll bring him along to join you. You're quite sure you want me to go to the lecture? Oh, you'll love it. These lectures are a scream. <laughs> she wants you to meet a few of my contemporaries, gentlemen of a somewhat earlier vintage. And I always say, the older the wine, the brighter the bubbles. I'll get my things. I must say you handle it gracefully. Now, if your distinguished colleague runs true to form, this bank will gradually sink into a complete stupor, and you will emerge from this whole sticky wicket with no blemishes on your character and even a little dignity. Content? Yes. This lecture may be a three-hour session with questions and answers and a few intermissions. Oh, what's wrong? Well, nothing. I can't help worrying uh, about my vintage. It will be interesting to see if it turns out spar sparkling or flat. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. <laughs> hey. There are those of you sitting out there who are thinking, Content Delville, world's prize boo. I knew Paul was upset, but I thought it was because I had hit him about acting his age. But when I kissed him goodbye, I nearly grabbed his arm to keep him from going. You see, the hum, that soft golden sound had gone. Oh, you don't know, or maybe you do, how that sudden silence can freeze a woman's heart. I stood there stunned, and then began to wait. I did the routine things, and I knew this thing hadn't come out of a box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> and I found a letter in someone else's pocket addressed to someone else, someone else's language, none of my business, so I opened it. <laughs> Dear Kiki, Ufa Morgan Art Vara Na, and then down about halfway, I saw Monsieur and Madame Delville. Hello, Ross. Can you take about 10 minutes for a quick translating job? It pays handsomely. Swedish, what else? I wouldn't bother you, but this it just could mean Bermuda. Howard Johnson's is too festive. I know. Meet me at the Advanced Studies Lecture Hall right away. I. <laughs> Maybe it's an unscheduled lecture. Maybe they found the place empty. Drove back home? By way of Atlantic City, I call you in to render an expert opinion. Exhibit A, the secret code containing the plan to sink content Delva. You are allowed one hint. It's in Swedish and go gently. Dear Kiki. Uh, couldn't you die? Oh, for Moria. 
Det var en nærvarende, vigtige udvikling af forskning. Jeg kan to join you due to important developments in research program. Please convey my sincerest regrets to Monsieur and Madame Delville. No more. That's it. I guess I'm not used to reading other people's mail. <laughs> but at least I know what to do. What? Kill myself. <laughs> Ross, when was the last time you lied to your wife? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> I mean a real marriage buster. Can't think. So far, they've all worked fine. <laughs> How can you love her and still play around? Who says I play around? Don't all men really? There's a wonderful poem. Higamous, hogamous, woman's monogamous. Hogamous, higamous, man is polygamous. <laughs> Put that on my tombstone. <laughs> Why don't you strike back? Make him jealous. Uh, have an affair with another man? Uh, funny you should think of that. You? Amusing at first blush, but on closer inspection you'll find that I'm mature, <laughs> full of bounce, and an unconditional guarantee of quality. Don't be silly. <laughs> What's so silly? Something for everyone. For Paul, a lesson. For me, the fulfillment of a lifetime's ambition. For you, a trip to the moon on gossamer wings. We have known each other too long. It's incestuous. By the idea of you even holding my hand, it's the most embarrassing thing I ever heard of. What are you doing? Holding your hand. <laughs> I'll admit it's not the most thrilling move in the repertoire, but I like to save the blinding flash for the home stretch. <laughs> oh, Ross, it's very sweet of you to go into your Rudolph Valentino act to cheer me up. <laughs> but you're making me nervous. There's only one thing that help, can help me at this point, and that's to figure out just exactly what the hell went fluid. Why can't you face it? In my personal opinion, all these husband-wife shenanigans boil down to just one thing. What? Sex. <laughs> you know, I've been happily married, within reason, for over 20 years. And let's face it, after the first 15 years, you sort of run out of surprises. Not if you're creative. Creative? I read a book where it said that married love is like a great open canvas, wherein the true artist creates new designs, new colors, new beauty. There are times when even Picasso needs a new can of paint. <laughs> I guess it just isn't as important to a man as it is to a woman. We're pretty keen on it. And how can you have these hit-and-run, fly-by-night affairs? Uh, you notice we don't have them by ourselves? <laughs> I don't care what you say. He's weak and immoral and a cheat. But how did he get that way, living all these years with a wonderful woman like me? <laughs> he doesn't appreciate you. And I know someone who does. Someone who will calm your fears, heal your tears, and care for you with the utmost tenderness. My mother! <laughs> You're absolutely right. That's not what I had in mind. <laughs> There's a train up to Boston at 11.05. I'll be glad to drive you up to Boston, my car. And if we get sleepy, we can stop. Oh, stop it. If I ever said yes to any of your nonsense, you fits. 
You'd faint dead in your tracks. I would be very happy to drive you. All right, you may. <laughs> you mean that? See? You turn white as a sheet. <laughs> yes, I mean it. You may drive me to the railroad station. But first, I want you to take me by your house so I can say goodbye to you, to your wife, and borrow back the suitcase I lent her. I don't see why you have to drag my wife into this. Just to keep the record straight. She's a terrific gal. Much too good for you. Maybe that's the trouble. You're all so damn perfect. Ladies, the way a woman loves a man, the way she feels about him, thinks about him, dreams about him, the way she dresses for him, cooks his food, watches, worries, waits, and cries for him. A woman loves a man all day and all night. She loves him when she's happy and when she's sad, when she's rich and when she's poor. When all is said and done, if your man makes you feel you're not wanted, you gather up your pride and go. So I went to the Barnett's Phone my mother up in Boston to expect me on the late train. Come ten. Come ten. Pas ici. Et pardon, ça change. Hello, elle est probablement au supermarket. Supermarket fermé. She ought to be here. We're well ahead of schedule. Allons, Francais. No. We're home now. The local patois is American. Ah, oh, so triste. In these last three hours, we've spoken enough French to start a cabinet crisis. Whatever you say, darling. <laughs> dream, my wife finds that from Mr. Delville to darling is too abrupt a change. May I suggest a compromise? All. Oh. Simple, direct, and it has deep meaning for me. Oh, it makes the lips form a kiss. Oh, tell me, what was the name of that beautiful lake where we parked the car? The Municipal Reservoir. <laughs> Someday I'll show you Sweden. I'll take you to the Castle Torup near Namba. I wonder if she's next door. It has purple beech trees and black swans. She could at least have left a note. Ah, your letter, that is, the envelope. I put it in the pocket of your coat. Hmm. In the pocket? Hmm. Well, surely she wouldn't go through your pockets and open a letter plainly addressed to <coughs> someone else. Of course not. But where is it? Besides, it was in Swedish. Come sit down and and uh, come sit down and stop pacing up and down. Really, one would think you had committed a crime. Well, if I have, it was a charming, innocent crime. A quiet drive to a secluded rendezvous beside the evening waters. Fascinating conversation with a beautiful woman. And then off to Howard Johnson's for a jumbo beef burger. That's your story, and don't let anyone change a word. Katrine, the entire experience belongs to you and me. It is only right that we lock it in our hearts and throw away the key. Are you suggesting that I keep my mouth shut? Discretion is the better part of valor. What exactly does that mean? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> On one condition. Ah, blackmail. Yes, you will have to seal my lips with a kiss. <laughs> Back so soon? Uh, we were wondering where you'd got to. We were, were we? Well, how was it? Uh, what, darling? How was the lecture? 
Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Delville, I'm sure you have things to talk over with Paul. Well, Paul? Oh, we didn't go to the lecture. I know you didn't. Oh? Because I went to the lecture, and there was no lecture. It's tomorrow night. Oh, what a silly mistake. You may say that again. I can't say I blame you for getting upset. Please, do me a favor. Don't be understanding. I don't want to be understood. I want to be strange and maladjusted and make wild accusations with no foundation in fact. Whatever you like. Do you, re you realize that you are looking me straight in the eye? Can I shift them around? <laughs> Try, just for a change of pace, by telling the truth. Gladly. Now wait, I want to lean against something. Gentlemen, quickly now, a man is on the spot. He is suspected of a physical encounter, accidental spur of the moment, but an affair. The question is, what should he tell his wife? There are only two possible courses. Tell her or keep your mouth shut. Some men feel they should make a clean breast of it, regardless of consequences. Such a man will say, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, I love you. And maybe his wife forgives him, and maybe she doesn't. But one thing is certain, confession can work only work once or twice. <laughs> Three mistakes, and you're out. Now other men feel the mistake is on their own hands, and why stir up a nest of wild hornets? The second man will swear in a stack of Bibles, I am innocent. Nothing happened. I love you. And curiously enough, the same phrase is used by a totally innocent man who in fact has not done a thing. All right, the truth. Shoot. Very well. I do solemnly swear on a stack of Bibles, I am innocent, nothing happened, I love you. Did you know that Nils was not coming to meet baby Snooks when you let me wait here and keep an eye out? How did you manage the Swedish? Ross Barnett translated it. Ross Barnett? Ross handsome, understanding, attractive. <laughs> oh, the languages department. Yes, he's quite gifted. You'd be surprised at how gifted he is. <laughs> but Ross Barnett is not the point. Did you or did you not tell me a point blank, fat, black lie? I told a lie. Good. A small, piping voice of truth lurks in you somewhere. Now I feel free to go back to Boston. Boston? May I come with you? No, thank you. I have plenty of company waiting for me in the car. Company? And I'm sure you have big things to attend to. Content. I would like to explain. I, I already understand. That's why I'm going. I got involved with a young girl. I let myself get out of hand. I've got to hurry. I know I ought to be sedate and dignified, the rock of Gibraltar. I have to pack. But I'm still childish enough to be capable of making a mistake. Excuse me. The mistake I made was in <laughs> lying to you. Yes, I knew Niels was not coming. Yes, I had an uncontrollable insult, impulse to start something with baby Stokes. So I took her out in the car, and I parked, and what's more, I talked French. And then I saw how silly it all was, and I took her to Howard Johnson's. Howard Johnson's? <laughs> As if anyone would... What's more, I bought her a hamburger, and then I brought her back here and found you were out with this Bernard Dross. 
And then I took her in my arms and kissed her large as life. I don't want to hear. You saw when you tiptoed in. Why shouldn't you hear? I did not tiptoe. You were so, so wrapped up, I could have stumped in wearing <laughs> army boots. But you did come in and you did see. I came, I saw, and I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her a kiss because I felt like an idiot for starting something I wasn't prepared to finish. And I wanted to be polite so I wouldn't hurt her feelings. What about my feelings? I'm sorry I lied to you. So am I. So am I. The fact is, it hardly matters whether you went halfway, a quarter way, or the whole way. You can't measure faithfulness in fractions. Mm, that's a good one. I resent this girl, Paul. I resent her like poison. Not because she's a well-stacked sex pot, but because she draw, drove one sharp, wedge-shaped lie between you and me. Content. Are you serious, I mean, about going? Don't you remember, Paul? I'm from Boston. <laughs> Content, wait, please. I want to go to my room to pack. Content. No. Gentlemen, I can hear your thoughts. A man with his salt would go break down the door and show her what a husband is for. But I was not feeling worth much salt at that point. And there is a certain expression a woman gets in her eyes when she says no and means it. It's as though an inner door closes that cannot be opened by any force on earth. And least of all, and last of all, by the man who closed it. Oh! It's, ah, Katrine, come in. Let me look at you. I want to see what it could be that has brought on my second childhood. Has it become clear? Yes, I think that answers my question. Will you let her go? How do you know she wants to go? She is a woman of strong character. She was carrying a suitcase the size of a house, and there is a limousine waiting for her in the driveway. A limousine? Don't tell me you're jealous. Why should I be jealous? You know, of course, there is nothing to fear. Content is not the kind of woman to throw away 25 years of married life. All this show of leaving is quite obvious. Typical feminine stratagem, pretending to pack, pretending to run away with a strange man. Ah, that's enough to give you a nervous breakdown. Darling Paul, you do look unsteady. Come over here and rest your head on my bosom. No, thank you. I've had, it. I've had enough of your bosom to last you a long time. What I need is a way to keep my wife from walking out of that door. You could help me to convince her. Convince her of what? Reassure her. Tell her I'm innocent. Mrs. Delville, your husband is innocent. <laughs> Thank you. I'll tell her myself. Come, sit down. Let me massage your temples and loosen your tie and make you comfortable. You and I, Katrine, it took me 25 years to get comfortable. I couldn't go through all of that again. And certainly not with a, a beginner. Not that there is anything wrong with you, but you walk too fast, you eat too slow, you speak with an accent. I would have to learn the size of your hats, the size of your shoes, the size of your je ne sais quoi. And I'm already adjusted to someone who walks and eats and talks and sleeps at exactly the right speed. And she, w she wears size 22 and a half, five and three quarters, Six double A with or with uh, 34, 24, 34, 60, 15 with or without seams, 
I would go mad if I had to learn that all over again. <laughs> it would be such fun to teach you. Aha, but you didn't come here to play teacher. That's my profession. I want You came to... here for quite another purpose. I want a baby. Not so loud. Of course you want a baby. It is clear now that what you're really after is a husband. No, thank you. I can do it myself. Katrine. We are speaking of babies. There is no such thing as do it yourself. I don't want a husband. Now please don't interrupt. I am the teacher. Yes, in spite of all your Swedish freedom, you're still a woman, and you and all of the little ones need the care and feeding that only a husband can provide. In plain American, when something is finished, it's time to move on. Perhaps I did lose sight of my goal. I don't know about a husband, but one thing I do know, you are a most persuasive teacher. All right, break clean and go to a neutral corner. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Delville, you are just in time. Thank God. Mr. Delville and I have come to an understanding I'm no longer interested in him as a biological mate. Don't tell me he flunked. I did not flunk. I did not even take the exam. Now, if you excuse me, I do have things to attend to. So for the moment, I'll leave him in your hands. I trust you enjoy him as much as I have. I hope you didn't listen to that nonsense. I swear on a stack of Bibles. Please, no more Bibles. Content, you've got to believe me. I didn't touch her. I've got to go. He's blinking, he's blowing his horn. Who, who is blowing his horn? The language department. <laughs> he's trying to get me to hurry. He's quite in the company tarn blower, isn't he? Subject is closed. Are you driving up to Boston with him? I don't care to discuss it. You know, I'm a methodical scientist, and yet I told you a childish lie. I told you I was going to a lecture that wasn't even being held today, and I left you a message. What message? I could have taken this letter with me, but something made me overlook it so you would find it. Your subconscious thinks I speak Swedish? The proof, <laughs> the proof lies in the fact that you did find it and you did get the message. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. If he doesn't stop that clicking, I will go out there and disconnect his button. Content, listen to me. A girl like Katrine looks like fair game. Yes, now you see her, now you don't. Every step she takes is knee deep in responsibilities. Marriage, family, a home, but you... Oh, please, leave me out of this. And will you get out of my way? You have made your contribution to the world, in your home, your work, your children. You've done your part with great success. And now you're a free woman with no more burdens ahead of you. You can go places and do things and make love for the sake of making love without reservations or defects. Is, is he banging on the door? He has no right to come banging on another man's door. Doesn't he know you are a married woman? Does he think he can pack you into his limousine and drive you off to Boston the minute my back is turned? This is my house, and you are my wife, and if he doesn't know, I will damn well teach him. Well, did you teach him? Uh, well, who oh, was his yes, wife? I, I forgot to tell you. We asked her to ride with us as chaperone. <laughs> Excuse me, but I seem to have misplaced something. He's right here, and I hope you'll be very happy. <laughs> it's a statuette, about so high. Oh, the Swedish Oscar. 
it's intended as a wedding gift for the man I'm going to marry. Shall I present it to the lucky winner? Or will you do the honors? I think I'll do it. Thank you. When I find one of my own. I wonder if your friends would mind giving us giving me a ride to the station. I don't see why not. We can buy a book of tickets and all ride off together like girls can. <laughs> Poor old Paul. Sometimes don't leave me. Gentlemen, I can't live. Oh, we were sorry. That's not pleasure. <laughs> Sometimes I can't live without you. I know it's too late to say I'm sorry. I've made a fool of myself. And what is worse, I have hurt something I treasure most in all the world, our marriage. Content, I beg you, believe me, forgive me, I love you. Ladies, when you have brought them to their knees, <laughs> It is time to stop. <laughs> After all the dust has settled, one thing stands out crystal clear. You'll never know exactly where they have been, or what they have done. So you must simply make up your mind. Do you love your man or don't you? And if you do love him, you must believe in him. Believe him even when he looks so bad you could die. I believe you. I forgive you. I love you. Aww. Goodbye, Mr. Delville. And there you have it. Monogamy. One man legally married to one woman. As you can see, I am for it 100%. So help me God. Other hand, dear. <laughs> so help me God. Good night. Good night.